Hey friends, it's Saturday. It is time for my favorite live of the week, the Saturday Psychic Sampler, where you ask specific questions and I do my best to give you specific answers. I'm Christiana Gaudette. I am your Tarot Fairy Godmother. I'm so happy to see you all here today. Uh, Wendy Robinson, so glad you have renewed your membership. Thank you so much for that. And of course, a special shout out to all of the members and the moderators. Thanks for being here and please do like this video. I, I see you reminding each other to like the video and I'm so grateful for that. The more likes I get, the better it is for me. All right, you know what we do here today. We are going to do readings for your specific questions. Let's hop right on over to card cam. So it's, it's a little bit of a leap for me, but not too much. I thought I would once again use Aunt Lily's Tarot. We used it a week ago or so, and people really enjoyed it. And I think I can do these readings with these cards. We'll see. I also have, in honor of the day, for those who celebrate, I do have this. Um, I'm not confident reading with this deck, but if ever there were a day to try, it, it is today. Oh, Mixuir, Michelle, thank you, thank you, thank you for the super sticker. I really appreciate that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I think what I'm going to do is I will be using pot tarot at certain junctures as we go forward. I won't use it for everyone. I won't use it in every reading. It will sort of remain here. We'll, we'll put it right down here at the ready, and um, I, I will use it. As, as I can. I was going to say I'll use it as I see fit, but I'm not even sure it is how I see fit. It's just how the flow goes. All right. Here we go. Starting with Jeannie Mnuchin. You are up first, my friend. I am just... Uh... <laughs> Karen Hendershot, today is Finn's birthday. Finn is the dog. And yes, he is 420 friendly. That is funny. That is so funny. <laughs> Some people are like, please use pot tarot on me. I'll do my best. I, I need, I will have, to be honest, it's the kind of deck where I may need to use the guidebook because it's, it's tough. I mean, it's a nice guidebook, though. If you check it out, it's like all in color. So, you know, it's cool. So yeah, I, I got it handy. I do. Okay. <clears throat> so Jeannie, thanks for your patience. Thanks for being a member. We appreciate you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I'm really trying to get started, but y'all are just engaging me here. Uh, Wendy, totally fine with the guidebook. Good. Will do. Um, make sure you're I see my question is kind of long. I wanted to compensate, but I can't afford much right now after taking those days off this week, which you needed to do. I so appreciate it, man. It's, it's great. I really appreciate you helping out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, here we go. Jeannie, here it is. And thank you so much for being a member. And thank you for your patience with me today. Question with multiple parts. I'm here. Two grant opportunities are due. The project grant would require a space for open studios in Eastworks. I'm meeting with the landlord on Wednesday to discuss space, op space options for Bite Size Blend short performance showcase. Is this likely to work out? Um, honestly, there is no reason not to meet. It is right that you should meet. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, unclear to me if you're going to find something or not. The Fool was the, the first card out, which feels hopeful, but The Fool does not offer a real outcome. It just says it's kind of right to do. And then the subsequent cards are, are not much help. So you're just going to have to show up and, and do the best you can with that. The answer is a big fat maybe. Um, okay. Next, Pay It Forward is another opportunity for a performance at City Space. Is it City Space, Sit Space? I don't know. I don't. If Open Studios doesn't work, would Bite Size, yeah, it is City Space, okay. Would Bite Size Blends work at City Space? If Open Studios doesn't work, would Bite Size Blends work at City Space? Very well. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Very well. 
Or would another workshop ending in performance be better, like intergenerational storytelling or mass gender identity or recycled puppets? Would that be better? No, 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 no. I think if you're going to be there, you should do the, the bite-sized blends. You absolutely should. Absolutely, yes. So either way, it's bite-sized blends. All right, here it is. So the too long didn't read version of this is, should I talk to the woman and ask if I can do the intro instead, or is it just doing, going to create a big mess and make choir awkward? And uh, I do want to share this whole story because it's here and, and I, I want to know it, so let's do it. I suggested we do Not Ready to Make Nice by the Chicks for choir, and they accepted that song has been a rallying cry for young queer folks in the last few years. Yes, especially trans folks with everything going on right now. Seriously. Um, I also wanted to do it because I had a nice cis white lady and her partner who is trans misgender me and make me feel unwelcome at the first rehearsal for our trans and non-binary chorus. No, 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 no. Don't be exclusionary. Oh, gosh. That, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, even though I was clearly wearing a pronoun pin and my lanyard with my name and pronouns. They knew me before COVID when I wasn't out. They also deleted me from their socials when I tried to warn the partner about one of their colleagues who was a former roommate. Now, the nice cis white lady is doing the intro. If it was anything else, if it was anyone else, I'd be upset, but I'd eventually move on because it's her. I can't stop thinking about it. All I hear in my head is the song. Should I talk to Kay? Leave it. What's in my highest good? Sorry for rambling, but I'm devastated. I understand. I understand. This is tough. This is tough. Yeah, Milk and Honey, by all means, put that question on in there and I will get to it for sure. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so, first of all, I'm sorry, it's hard, but when we look at, the, like, I think this pivots, you know, this person, right, this woman, when we look at this woman, this woman does not really understand community and how it works, and that's not personal towards you, that's in general, um... This woman does not necessarily mean bad, like isn't trying to be bad, just doesn't know how to be good. Do you know what I mean? Like isn't self-reflective enough. So, and, and I feel like it would be good to try to make friends with this person. I really do. Um... And I recognize that that's not what you want to do, but having a conversation is good. Having a conversation to try to... So yeah, yeah. Since, I mean, the, the reasoning is I'm seeing it, having nothing to do with what has transpired in the past between you and this person, it would make sense that the introduction be done by a person who is fully a member of the community, such as yourself, rather than someone who is community adjacent, such as this person. But I think you would have to build a rapport first. Now you asked a great question. What is in your highest good here? Honestly, what is in your highest good is to really decide if this is where you want to put your energy. Um, I think like it can happen and I do this a lot too. It can happen that there will be like a really, you know, something that strikes us as a very significant affront when it really is just a person not thinking and okay, not thinking sucks too, right? People should think, but it's not, you know, it's, it's a passive slight. It's not an aggressive slight, if, if that makes sense. So I think you have to sort of process this in your head. Could you have a conversation? Yes, you could build a rapport. You absolutely could. 
<laughs> Make sure she definitely doesn't mean ill, but the thought of talking to her puke. And if that's how you feel, you don't have to do this work. It is not your work to educate this person. It is not your work to do this if you don't want to. So it really comes down to um, where to put your energy. And that's what you say. Make sure where to put my energy is precisely what I've been debating. And so let's look. Put your energy into having this conversation. We get the emperor. And we know the emperor is a card for community as well. Decide you don't want to do the work of having this conversation. I am leaning toward like either way is fine. But I am leaning toward have the conversation if you can get past your ick and approach this person in a way that feels really open and cordial. If you can do that. And then the question that comes to me, could you, when you do that, approach this person about how you felt when they tried to exclude you from the community? Honestly, if you're going to have an honest conversation, not in an angry way, not in a hurt way, just in a, you know, I debated whether I should have this conversation with you, but I really needed to let you know how much it hurt me that you couldn't look at my pin and see that I had come out in, 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 in between the last time you saw me and now, and that you couldn't honor that. Because I have a feeling that if this person heard that, they would become defensive, but they would hear your truth. They would be defensive, but they would hear it. So totally up to you. But I lean toward if you can get yourself in the right headspace to have the conversation. All right, good. <laughs> Trey, <laughs> I can always count on you. What Trey has to say about this is asking people to think is difficult. A lot of stupid people out there, you know? A lot of people who are stupid, traumatized, you know, for whatever reason. And this particular person that, that uh, makes you here, Michelle, is talking about is, is just a, a dunderhead as far as I can see. Like really doesn't, like just doesn't get it in that way. Um, and on that level has not done their work. But I don't think that's Michelle's job at all. I think it's Michelle's job just to say, hey, you know, here's the stuff. <laughs> all right. Very good. Thank you again, Mix You Ear, for being here, for sharing. Um, these are exactly the kinds of questions I like to do. And thank you for the super sticker. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, George, good to see you. You're up next. Thanks for being here. Can I know, um, is, have there been any changes in Sherry's feelings? I, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. I think it's probably time to focus elsewhere, really. All right. Mariana, Mariana. Is the fiancé going to be good at least this month? <laughs> Hang on. I, I got you. Um, <laughs> Michelle, make sure you're laughing at a dunderhead. Is that even a term? Did I make that up or is it a real thing? I don't even know. And what does it mean? Jeannie, it is, it is my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being a member. All right. Mariana, Mariana, is the fiance going to be good at least this month? Maybe, maybe, but you know, you would be smart to kind of look at what you got going on here. Do you really want to marry this person? I mean, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but look at your question. Look at these cards. I got questions. Emily, good to see you. Can I know what Ellie's next move toward me? We are apart now. Okay. I'm not sure there is a next move. At least for now, we may stay apart. 
long term, there may be some, some new contact, may reach out, but it's not going to be immediate. All right, Trey Cameron, good to see you. Thanks for being a member. Do I have a spirit guide or guides? Who might they be? Ancestors, souls that I don't know on an earthly plane, all of the above. What is their purpose for me specifically? Fair. And you know, this is a good tarot reader, tarot reader teachable moment. Because like in my mind, like I have a particular belief that we all have spirit guides. Every single one of us. That is my belief. We all have a spiritual team. Um, but that's my belief. And to just say that without doing the reading would be dishonoring Trey's question and superimposing my belief system on someone else. So we're just going to do the reading. All right. First question, do I have a spirit guide or guides? <laughs> what do we make of this? <laughs> what do we do with that? I want another card. Wow. Wow. That makes it more powerful. It doesn't make it less confusing, but it makes it more powerful. Here's where I'm going to go with it. I'm, I just want one more card. Oh, you look at that. All major arcana, I have to say yes. Just because it's all major arcana, I have to say yes. But look at these cards. These are deeply spiritual cards. So I'm going to say multiple guides and their purpose. Their purpose is to help you get through difficult times and to help you figure out who you are and to help you find what is going to be your true paths, your true passions to help you in this lifetime, very literally to guide you. It's in the name. It's in the name. Who are they? <laughs> Trey's laughing and saying, well, at least it's not the devil. I know that would be funny too, right? Who are they? Wow. Okay. So right away, I'm going to say female relative who has passed on. I don't know if it is someone known to you or not, but definitely in your ancestry, female, female, um, more than that. Oh yes. Also some higher level kinds of, um, entities, maybe entities who have never been human, who are of the angelic realm or whatever that is. So a bunch of them. Yes. Yes. Um, and their purpose is to guide you. The question you didn't ask that I'm going to ask is how can you more easily access their wisdom and guidance? And the answer is don't overthink it. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have asked that question. Um, be in, be as balanced and as peaceful as you can when seeking their wisdom, because that will be easier to hear them. However, when you are feeling out of sorts and chaotic, they are with you. Oh, you have a lot of strong female ancestors. That makes sense. Um, Justine has some really interesting insights here. Um, Trey, definitely check out what Justine's got going on. Good to see you, Justine. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Definitely check that out. Some good stuff. All right. Nalini, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for using members only emojis. How is our new manager going to be and will things improve with this new manager? I think, I think the new manager is going to be better. This is improvement. Yes. Yes, this will be improvement. There may be some things about the new manager that's like a little goofy, but mostly I think this is really good and it will be improvement. Yes. Okay. Madiha Ness, so good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks for being a member. We appreciate you. Thanks for using members only emojis. The school situation got much better. Hallelujah. But does the school or teacher Diana have a hidden agenda? Is there a hidden agenda? I mean, there's always a hidden agenda in when we talk about schools in this way, in these situations in the sense that they, you know, they'll say, I mean, yes, do they care about your kid? Yes. But they also care about all the other things. You know, they have a lot of agenda 
for you, the well-being of your child is the, is the only thing. And for them, it's all the things. So there's always a hidden agenda. But I don't think there's anything like worse. I don't think there's anything worse. I don't think there's anything against your child, against your family. Nothing like that. No, no, no. Okay. Justine, here we are. Thanks for sharing that information about spirit guides. Appreciate it. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for using members only emojis. I'm heading back home today in part for my brother's birthday. Happy birthday. Who I was not getting along with at all before I'd left. He pissed me off bad. And I know he always banks on me just brushing it off, sweeping it under the rug. Um, in part going back with my tail between my legs because the gift shop job didn't end up working out. Okay. And in part because I have a medical issue I need to see about. How will things be upon my return home? The family dynamics. I intend to get back to Galveston as soon as I can, but I may be stuck there a week or so. So any advice on how, on how quickly I should be able to get back out there and, um, or aim to get back out there. But I want to talk about a couple of those other things too, if I may. As regards your brother, it probably does make sense to make nice and celebrate his birthday. Uh, just to keep the peace until you can get out, to be honest. As far as the tail between your legs thing, if a, jo if a job doesn't work out, a job doesn't work out. There's plenty of other jobs. And I think that there could be some judgmental energy there, but don't carry judgmental energy about yourself or anyone else really inside your own heart. Don't do that. You know, don't let other people make you feel bad. When you get back there, you'll find a job. No problem. It will happen. No problem. Now, to answer the question you actually asked, um, I'm concerned that it could take longer than you want it to, as long as like three weeks. If that's the case, and for whatever amount of time it's going to be, really try to keep your head together. Don't, don't let other people's energies, like when we look at the family dynamic, the family dynamic is going to be defensive and weird if you let it be. Don't you be defensive and weird, and you don't have to be defensive and weird if you have really good protection around you. So put good, def like, yes, be defensive, but be defensive energetically, but not in your conversation or in the energy you give your family. Don't react. Do not be reactive to how weird they are. I'm sorry, excuse me for saying that about your family, but there it is. It could take as long as three weeks. If it does, don't freak out, but protect yourself. Justine's like, yikes. Yeah, yeah, it's, but you know, it's not great, but just do what you got to do and put up your energetic barriers and I think you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Well, no, see, if you're well shielded, you're not going into battle. Justine says, it looks like I'm going into battle. I promise you, if you go there with that energy, that's exactly what will happen. Exactly. Go there like, I am protected. I am in my energy. I am protected. Happy birthday. Give me some cake. It's 420. Let's see your dealer. I'm sorry. That was silly. But, you know, I mean, whatever. Um, make it be okay. And, um, and here we go. Justine, we have the Ace of Pipes reversed. Let me just look up the suit. Um, it's swords. So it's the ace of swords reversed. Do not try to have hard conversations. Just as little information as possible. Share as little information as possible. And don't let it all get up in your head. There it is. 
Barbie Bird's on board with this. Okay, good. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There's Justine and Barbie Bird. You are up next. So yeah, you're definitely also getting a card from um, from this deck as well. I think it's weird they called it pot tarot. Who outside of my generation calls it that ever these days? I don't even say that. That was weird, right? Okay. Barbie Bird. I'm curious if you can give me a reading for my cat, Carl, of course. And Barbie, thanks for being a member. We really appreciate you. Of course. <laughs> it's a Carl check-in. Um, a reading for your cat, Carl. His behavior has been a little inconsistent. Is it due to the traveling we did? How is Carl doing overall? Does he like it with me? Okay, let's see. How is Carl? I think, okay, so you are traveling, and I think it's fun that in this deck, the chariot is actually like walking dogs on a skateboard. I, I think that's so fun. But the chariot can be about travel. So I think this does say that some of the weirdness is from travel, but I think the travel was also enjoyed. I think Carl is sensitive to the fact that you're carrying a little bit of a heavy energy right now. And I'm not saying that to make you feel bad, but I think Carl is very sensitive to your energy. So some of that erratic stuff could be that. When we look at how Carl is in general, Carl, you know, is Carl okay physically? Is Carl okay physically? I'm not a doctor. So if you have a question, obviously take a cat to the doctor, but I think Carl's okay physically. I think there's just a heavy, heavy connection between the two of you. What that tells me is that Carl is super happy with you, would never want to be anywhere else, but is, is very tuned into you. You've only had him since October. Yeah, no, man, um, this cat is yours. Oh my gosh. This cat is yours, is very happy with you. What you need to do is talk to Carl more and let Carl know that you're okay. Because Carl will feel more secure if Carl knows that you're okay. Because Carl is super sensitive to your moods. I'll tell you something. Years ago, um, it was noticed in my household that the cats, when we were sleeping, would come into our bedrooms and wake us up just by staring at us. And the question was posed to my father, the Methodist minister, how is that happening? And my father, the Methodist minister said, well, you know, I think there is something, well, he didn't say psychic back then it was ESP. We called it ESP. He said, it's probably some kind of ESP. And he was not like, he was not like that, you know? Um, he was not fanciful like that. But even my father, the Methodist minister knew that cats can be very psychic. So there it is. So Barbie, when you chat to him, let him know what you're really feeling. Chat with him about the serious stuff. And yeah, arthritis is possible, certainly. Okay, and now Barbie, here we go. The Hanged Man. It initially came up reversed, but I felt the strong need to turn it upside down, but I almost feel like it doesn't matter. It could really be anywhere. Um, the thing I want to say to you, Barbie, is just chill. Just chill and all will be well. Chill. There it is. All right. Well, thank you, Barbie. Okay. Dapika, I'm happy to see you. Yes, I'm doing well. I hope you are too. Exams in the first 10 days of May and they're professional level exams. So the passing percentage isn't really high. So I want to know if I'll clear those exams. And if not, according to the current energy, what changes should I make in order to pass those exams? So right now, 
these are hard exams. I mean, a lot of people seem to have to take them more than once. Um, I think what you need to do is make sure you're getting enough sleep. I know you're studying well. I'm not worried about that. Um, just take really good care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally in this time leading up to the exams. And that's going to give you your very best result. Good luck. Christine Hallowell, good to see you. Thanks for being here. And then I lost you. Here you go. Okay. Will my son and I be able to join the leadership program in the martial arts school? We are both excited for this new beginning. Okay. An interesting question or interesting cards to that question for the, an answer to that question. I am not sure. It may... There may be literally some hoops you have to jump through to make it happen. Um, and there may be a time thing, like not now, but in a little while. So I think ultimately, ultimately, I think it's likely that you will, but I feel like it's not going to be quick and easy. So, so manage expectations. Ah, Melissa. I'm so excited. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. P has arrived. All is going well so far. Big smiley face. Love it. Thanks for using members only emojis on this topic. Would love to know any advice the universe has for me in regarding this visit. Stay confident in yourself. Um, keep your heart open and soft unless you see reason to do otherwise. You know, the, the global nature of all of this is, is a significant thing, you know? Um, and we're aware of that. But really, in this moment, you're going to have plenty of time later to unpack and figure out. In this moment, just relax, enjoy, feel, don't worry, and see what happens. Be present. Just be present. That's really the key. And we'll unpack it later. All right. Claire C., good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Will I get a fair price for my camper if I sell it to a dealer? So sell it to a dealer. Interesting. We just saw that card versus private sale. Huh? Sell it to a dealer. Private sale. I think there's reasons to sell it to a dealer. And it's not just the fair price, which I think, I mean, obviously they have to be able to mark it up, right? But I think there are ways that it's going to be so much easier to sell it to a dealer. So I think it's really worth looking at that. Yeah. All right. Ali Mammon, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Your arms. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. I want to check in on my arms and the healing rehabilitation and what the universe wants me to focus on, such as lifestyle or waking up my psychic muscles. I mean, I think right now healing is the primary thing, right? Um, isn't this interesting? Look at this card. Okay, this is the devil, the falling angel, the fallen angel. But look at the way this was depicted where we're puppets. And look at how the puppet strings are like attached to the arms. I think that's really interesting. Your primary focus is healing. Healing of the body, but while you're at it, healing of the mind, healing of the spirit, healing of all the things you need to heal from over the course of your life. That's what this time is about. Good luck. Oh, Madib. Um, this is Aunt Lily's tarot. Um, it's an indie deck. 
Um, you can find it. It's available. Just search for it. It's created by Claire Lilly. Um, there's a great story with this deck. It's an indie deck. You buy it directly from her. And um, I, I was a consultant on this deck early, early in its process. Um, she developed it first. It was going to be just for teens. In fact, it was going to be called Tarot for Teens. And as she started showing me the, the prototypes, I mean, yes, it's very teen friendly. It's very kid friendly, very kid appropriate. But I was like, this isn't just for teens. This is for everyone. And um, so it became Aunt Lily's Tarot. And uh, she, she developed it first for her niece. So, so there it is. It is to love, isn't it? Okay. Liz Harrison. You're up next. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Ooh. I did my best to hold my own in an unforeseen heavy conversation that was brought on my, by my three brothers and dad, who are mostly a united front. How was my perspective received by each of them? And will any changes be made as a result? Okay. Dad, Knight of Pentacles is not terribly movable. Brother one, there is at least one brother that, that sort of heard you. Brother two, there's another brother that doesn't hear you at all and is, in fact, is pissed off. And another brother, like, I think two out of the three brothers, well, I don't know. This one, I'm not sure. That one, is it that he is so sure of his truth that he won't listen to yours, or is he pursuing your truth? Let's see. I'm not sure. One brother is a wild card. There could be ways he hears your truth and other ways he does not. So, and then we say, okay, they're a united front. So what's the energy of the united front there? say there is a, a little bit of openness, more than you might have expected. A little, little bit of openness. Um, so will any changes be made as a result? You may be asking for a lot, maybe a little over time, maybe a little over time. This, is, this isn't like even baby steps. This is like baby steps for a baby ant. Wendy, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for rejoining. We really appreciate you. I feel a little bit out of my element late, lately. Just want to check in and make sure I'm in the space spirit wants me. In California, detoxing a friend to, um, to move her with, to, to be with me. It's a lot. It is a lot. Um, it is a lot. It is a lot. But I feel like you, you are doing, I mean, I don't even know it's, it's about choices. I feel like you are responding to a situation the only way you know how and the best way you know how. Like this isn't about choices. This is about just handling what life is giving you. And it feels bad because you're being more reactive than proactive, if that makes sense. Um, and I don't think you can be asking yourself, is this the right decision? Is this not the right decision? Because there's a million different ways to answer that in a million different moments. It's what you're doing. So just, le you know, if you're there, you might as well lean in fully and do it. And, um, and all will be well. All will be well. So don't question, just do at this point. All right. Virginia, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Will I be able to retire next year? Uh, maybe. Definitely within three years. Definitely within three years. Maybe. That's a big maybe. Lisa E., what an interesting question. How do I become less serious of a person and learn how to relax and have fun? Well, I'm going to say 
you can still be serious. You know, I don't think you need to be less serious. I just think you also need to know how to relax. And it's hard because you, it's about feeling safe. I feel like you, there've been so many situations in your life where you have not been safe, where you have not felt safe. And so how can you relax and have fun when you're trained not to feel safe? And I feel like what it is, is to recognize how stable and secure you are. I am stable and secure. I can afford to let my guard down in certain situations. I think that's what it is. I think you're hypervigilant. Smile Soul 20, good to see you. Thanks for being a member. We appreciate you. Next question. Dr. Oled, Robin Renee, good to see you. I think most of you know, but probably not all of you, that it is Robin Renee, Dr. Oled, who uh, first gave me the nickname Tarot Fairy Godmother. So... Um, why have I been so impatient lately and what can I do to be more patient? Love you too. Um, there are things that are pissing you off and those are like, it's justice issues. It could be personal. It could be professional. It could be in the world, political or whatever, but it's justice issues and you're not wrong about the issues. Like, I feel like there's a certain kind of anger that you need to have and that anger is leading to impatience and that's what needs to change. You need to do something different with the anger. Um, years ago, years ago, I, I had a job for a, um, a community organizing organization. Um, organizing low-income low neighborhoods, things of that nature. And the director said to me, you know, to do this, you have to have a slow-burning anger. And I feel like that's kind of what you need to be working on, developing that slow-burning anger that is a motivator. And that will allow you space for patience. Oh my gosh, Renata! Queen Kilharius that I'm not pronouncing correctly. I haven't seen you in forever. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. Okay. Febborn, looking for a general read on a Saturday. Oh my gosh, but I will. I will. I will. Febborn. But I'm going to do it with this. Here we go. What does Febborn need to know? Oh, there's that card again. Okay. And I just have to check. Um, okay, so the four, this is the four of wands. Okay. So the four, oh no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the four of joints is the four of wands. So we've got the hanged man, the four of wands, and justice. What you need to know, Febborn, is that you're doing exactly what you need to do to create your own stability and to create your own balance. There may be a lot of situations around that you don't like, but you can't do anything about it, so don't even try. You're doing what you need to do in your life to make things work and they will work. All right. Oh, Wendy, 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 I did you. Did I use pot tarot on you? I didn't. Um, Oh, Fedborn, if you have a question, go ahead and put it in. You're good. Go ahead and put it in. Um, Wendy, are you still here? Wendy, you had asked for pot tarot and I didn't. So let me just give you a card um, from here. And hopefully you're still here.
It's the seven of bongs reversed. <laughs> bongs always make me cough. <laughs> oh no, Wendy, you're here. I'm doing it. <laughs> this, what are bongs? Good Lord. I mean, I know what bongs are, but what are they here? Ah, bongs. I'm going to say they're probably water. Yeah, they're water. They're cups. Seven of cups reversed. Wendy, do not get caught up in your imagination. Do not get caught up in all the things. Just do what you got to do. That's the key. It goes back to the earlier message. Don't overthink. Same thing. All right. What are you all thinking about this deck? I think it's funny. Like, I would never use it except in humor, but I think it's funny. All right. Okay, Febborn, I will look forward to that. I will, I will. Rosemarie, you are up next. Are you? Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Um, my daughter and I keep seeing 307, which is my address back home in Pittsburgh. Is that a sign that we should move back home? What an interesting thing. Not necessarily. I think it's a sign about processing your past and the things that happened in that home so that you can move forward. When do you like the deck? Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, Rosemary, not necessarily a sign to move home, but a sign to process the past for sure. Susie Anderson, good to see you. Trying to decide if moving back to my home state is for my highest good. It, you know, it's weird. It opens you up to some things, but then closes you up to other things. So I think there could be reasons to do it if you want to. There's no, like... You know, I, I guess any decision will open you to some things and close you to others, right? That's not unique to this decision. I think if you want to do it, there's every reason to think that it's a good idea. Oh, it's another cat question. Yeah, you know I love reading for your animals. Martha Vank, thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for using members-only emojis. Is Marley the cat happy to be here at mom since last night? Importantly, she just adjusts, uh, will she adjust to the new cat box system? Pellets, not clay litter. Marley is a love, but also under the bed a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, how's Marley doing? Marley is not yet acclimated. It takes Marley some time. We got to give Marley time. That is the whole thing. As far as the litter box, specifically, that I think will be easy. The litter box piece is going to be easy. Marley is likely to like the new thing better. Um, but in general, like showing signs of comfort, showing signs of confidence, all of that, it will take Marley some time. Marley is defensive. And fine. Absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. Okay, Rosemarie. My son Kenneth says he keeps seeing the numbers 35, 37, and 36. He wants to know if this means he's going to find the right career or the right woman for him. The thing is, to find the right career, he has to have more confidence in himself. That's the key. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, the, the woman, I mean, I think a relationship, confidence is good for that too, but I think a relationship is really inevitable. I think that's coming. But for career, have more confidence because I think the things you might really want to do, you don't necessarily believe that you could, but maybe you could. Lumen, good to see you. Thanks for being here. I would like to know how I can... No.
I would like to ask how I can EH into my art studio. I think we might be missing a, a word there. Am I even on their radar? So contextually, I think I can do this. Um, um, it's all about communication. It's all about working with sort of the energy. Are you on their radar? Not as much as you should be. You have to communicate and you have to make yourself more visible. Um, but it can happen. It can absolutely happen. It's all about communication, community. Um... And then Lumen says, get E-H. I'm, I'm still not getting it. I'm so sorry. But let me know if I've interpreted it contextually enough that it makes sense. Because I just get that, yes, but it's about communication, community, and you need to be more visible. And let me know. If that didn't make sense, let me know, and I'll, I'll revisit it. Okay. Milk and honey, good to see you. What does May look like? Oh, Lumen, I got it. I have some weird history with her partner, and I'm not sure if she's blacklisted me from her community. So, no. Um, I, will, I will do that. Let me do milk and honey, and then I'm going to come back to you, Lumen, and say some more now that I understand. Now that I understand. Okay. Oh, and thank you for the feedback from last week, Lumen. Okay. So, Milk and Honey Tara, what does May look like? Busy, quick, going by quick, creative, nice, fun, lots of different things, some things that are likely to piss you off, and some things that could be really nice. Pursue the things and the people that you care about. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah, Rosemary, I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you, and I am saying that's what these numbers mean. Get over it. Get over it. You made the right decision. You know, hindsight improves on things. You know, you really had no choice. All right. Now, Lumen. Weird history with her partner. Not sure if she's blacklisted me from her community. Has she blacklisted you from her community? Not at all. And that's why just being more communicative is going to help. All right, thanks for clarifying that. Vaishali, I don't know how to frame this, but I feel upset with myself for hurting someone through my words unintentionally. I hate it when that happens. I'm sorry. Um, I don't mean to hurt anyone. It's just that I say something without filter um, or thinking about what the other person would feel about my words. How can I control this behavior of mine and try not to overdo or say something that could hurt someone's feelings? It's so hard. And I appreciate the fact that you're sensitive to it. I appreciate the fact that it bothers you when it happens. Um, when we look at, like, what you're really asking about is how to adjust your communication style. And the answer is you have to figure out who... You have to figure out, like, you, you have to be sensitive to the people you're talking to and try to gauge what they can take. There are some people you can be unfiltered around and other people you can't. So be more aware of your audience. That's really the key. Okay. Do, 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 do. You are very welcome, Rosemary. Okay. Who's next? Let's see. Scrolling, scrolling. Here we go. Rose, Rose. This week, I meet with the realtor and have them tour the house. How do you see that going? Um, the realtor will certainly be friendly. Um, the, the numbers that you get will be interesting. Um, will be interesting. Um, but overall, I think it's going, it'll go well. 
I think it'll go well. Fatima, it is good to see you. Betrayed by my husband who left us, I'm sorry. I can only divorce him in Africa where I married him, taking care of our kids by myself. Will I be able to get a better job to take better care of the kids? I understand. I'm so sorry you're going through this. This is really hard. Um, yes, you will. You will, be, you will recover from this. This is really, really hard, but you will recover. You will get a better job. You will be able to move forward. You will even be able to get that divorce ultimately. So yeah, it will be okay, yes. It'll take time, but it'll be okay. Okay, Karen Hendershot, here's the third version of the question. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. We appreciate you. What does Finn and my future look like in relationship to each other? Does he love me enough to be worth the fight or would he be happier elsewhere? He loves you, but the question is really about you. It's not about him. It's about you. Um, he could be happy elsewhere. He loves you. He could be happy elsewhere too. So he could be okay either way. You've given him the shelter and you've given him some training. You could rehome him and he could be okay. What's best for you? Obviously, it's your decision. But I feel like you need to think about what's going to be best for you to keep him or rehome him. Um, and, and that's a decision you're going to have to make. Um, and it's worth thinking about either way. Either way, Finn will be fine. Okay. Santiago, you're up next. Hang on a sec. I just overscrolled. Give me a minute. There you go. What advice can I get about the new job I'm going to start and make? Congratulations. Uh, what to avoid, what to do. This is not an easy job, my friend. I'm sorry to say that it's not an easy job. Um, there will be some good people there. Figure out who your friends and allies are and enjoy the good people there. You are absolutely capable of the work. I think the problem is at first, it's going to feel like a lot, a lot of information, just a lot, a lot, a lot. Hang in there. You'll get it. You'll figure it out. And it will be good and it will be fine. The beginning will be hard. But keep going. It'll get better. Okay. All right, Wadib, you're up now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. I have a burning question about work. I really enjoy where, where it is that I work, and right now it's part-time, but it's made me reconsider the benefits of working full-time. I'm wondering if I should hold out for a full-time position where I am, or should I consider looking elsewhere, or should I pick up a second part-time job? All good questions. Okay. And also pot tarot. Yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Hold out for a full-time position where you are, which I think would become available. Consider looking elsewhere. I don't, I don't, you like where you work. I don't know that you need to consider looking elsewhere. I think that there would be a full-time position available if you let them know that when one becomes available, you'd like it. I, I think that would happen. Um, should you pick up a second part-time job? Only if you need the money right now this minute. If you need the money right now, this minute, pick up a second full-time job, but then quit it when you go full-time at your current job. Now, let's see what this silly deck has to say. The queen of joints. What did we just figure out joints were? Like, I can't, I can't get it in my head. I can't even remember it. Um, joints or wands. So the queen of wands. So 
Madib, what's really important at work in your personal life and all things, you must nurture your creativity. You must nurture your spirituality. You must nurture your joy. You must have fun. That's what's important. Asaya, good to see you. Any good things coming toward me? I could really use good news. Wondering if I should trust my ex again. Together for almost 20 years, not used to being alone. Will I get into something new? Okay, let's see. So, good things coming. I think a lot of it is sort of, you need to heal and reprocess some things. The ex needs to stay the ex. It's a problem, it's upsetting, but the ex is an ex for a reason. And I think you're healing, you're in your time of healing. You will heal and you will see the wisdom of this. I promise you that you will. It is a good time for you to learn some new things, learn some new skills, uh, personally, professionally, creatively, whatever. And um, in general, good things coming towards you. Looks like more people, more money, um, be careful about you like you're not feeling happy right now don't like you know how sometimes when we're unhappy we do risky things be careful about that do not do risky things and in terms of a new relationship for you in terms of a new relationship for you there is a lot going on here. There is a whole lot going on. Yes, there will be a great relationship in the long run, but there is a lot of healing that you need to do. And I think there's healing not only from this past relationship, but things even prior, perhaps going all the way back to childhood. Do that healing work. Things will be so much better. Adrija, good to see you. Cards on your book. The editing is completed. How long would it take um, for a publishing company to accept it? I would say it could happen by September. Um, it's not immediate, but it will happen. And I mean, I, I'm thinking of in months, not years, although arguing with myself, it took it, it took it a lot longer to get edited than I thought it was going to. So maybe this whole thing is just taking longer than I think it's going to. I don't know. But what I can tell you is it's good and this is going to go well. That I can tell you. Gemini Sun, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a moderator. Does my dad have any messages for me? He passed away when I was younger. I could use some advice for him. I'm so sorry. Um, he wants you to trust yourself more. He recognizes that you've already been through a great deal of difficulty. And he feels like you are moving forward in a good way. And that you are focusing on the difficulty, not that you are a person who survives, recovers, moves forward. You should focus on the fact that you always move forward. That's the message I get. Ayosh, good to see you. Thanks for being here. So both you and Adrija are seeing 111, 1111, and 222 for Adrija quite frequently. What does this mean? I think it's, it's about, you know, the potential beginning of a whole new journey. You know, thinking about ones as the beginning of a journey and two is the decisions how we go forward. And if it's a journey of a relationship, we used to be individuals, now we are a couple, and how we do all of those things. I, I think it's about all that. Lily, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. It took me two weeks to drive here. Welcome, finally here to visit friends and follow up with doctors, okay? 
my vehicle gave me some trouble trouble driving here. You did say it was going to be an adventure, and it was. Um, I'm putting it in the shop on Monday to get the items repaired, and I don't know if I should sell it or keep it here for when I come back and visit. I'm not sure this, this is a good car to keep. Let's see. If it's okay to sell it at this juncture, I would just go ahead and sell it and not worry about it anymore. If, if that makes sense for you, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Baby Cakes, good to see you. What does the universe and the spirit, spirit guides, and I know you want me to do this with this, with this deck. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to re be redundant with my questions in recent months. The job search became my life and I'm sick of it myself. I understand completely. Um, what does the universe and my spirit guides have to say about my job search? Is it coming soon? When is it coming? What do I do in the meantime? Okay. What do we see about a job coming? Page of pipes. What pipes were swords? Pipes were swords, I think. Let me just check that. Yeah, pipes are swords. So, page of swords, I would say yes, coming soon, and just continuing to be open minded and open hearted and taking those interviews and making those applications. Now we have the Eight of Buds reversed, which is the Eight of Pentacles reversed. You are so tired of this process. But because the process is not tired of you, you're going to have to trust it. Seven of Swords, right? Seven of Pipes. You're going to have to trust the process. Ten of Swords, it's driving you nuts. And it feels bad and you feel like you're never, ever, ever going to find a job. But there will be healing. When you find a job, it will be a really good job. And here's a question. I don't even know if this makes sense. But like when I was working in Connecticut with those big casinos there, um, when the Wheel of Fortune came up about a job, like nine times out of ten, it would be, you're going to end up working at the casino. I recognize, though, you're not really close to those. So, you know, maybe not that. Maybe not that. But anyway, it will be a good job when it comes. What do you do in the meanwhile? Eight of Swords reversed. I mean, using this deck, I could say, I don't know, smoke weed? No, seriously, I'm sorry. I'm joking. Um, Eight of Swords reversed, avoid anxiety. Do whatever you can to not be in a place of anxiety. That is the most important thing. Do not let anxiety take you. That's the key. All right, that was fun. That was my first time doing a real reading with this deck. All right. Oh, Lily. Perfect. Those are my thoughts as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, good. Good, good. Teresa, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Um, um, thanks for being a member, Teresa. Thanks for being a moderator. Thanks for using members only emojis. May I have a reading about the rest of April for me? It's not going to be easy. Um, it could be a little hard financially, but that would be temporary. That would be temporary. It could be hard in terms of time, but that's because you're going to school. Um, and... 
you know, everything you're doing is about making changes in your life. So just remember that. The rest of April may not be easy, but you are making changes in your life to get you to where you want to go, and that's the right thing. Valentina, good to see you. Should I stay here at my current job or go work with a longtime friend who is head of a department? Okay. Here we go. Stay. Take the new job, the new opportunity. Huh. Oh, that's heavy and hard. And I don't even know. Like, I. Ugh, ugh. Stay. Let's do it this way. What I, I think we're leaning toward try the new opportunity. What happens if you try this new opportunity? It's gonna be busy. It's it's gonna it, it it's a lot, but I think it could have a good outcome. I think it could have a good outcome. What happens if you stay where you are? I mean, it's fine where you are, too. I think that's the problem. It's fine where you are. So which benefits you more in the long run? Taking the new opportunity, which I think would make you happy, or staying where you are, which is fine. Either is fine. There's no mistake here. I lean just this much toward the new opportunity, but only if you're willing to go through what it's going to take, because at first it will be hard. Uh-oh, Teresa, you said the magic word. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Teresa, you now get one of these cards. The chariot, is that not cute? Teresa, just remember you're on your journey and you're going where you need to go. I actually traveled in one of those things. It did not have a leaf on it, but I did travel in one. On numerous occasions, in fact. Okay. Okay, Renata, Quinn Kilharius. What are G's feelings toward me? I think there's some trust there. I think there's some communication and some curiosity. Um, I think there is, I mean, we're positive, but also defensive. And if we're looking at romance, like I'm not sure that any of this feels terribly romantic, but there is a positive curiosity, but also a defensiveness. Wendy, I do struggle. I don't get all the names right. I will tell you that, you know, I, I will try to like use Google to, to help me, you know, the how to pronounce videos. I try to do that. Um, but yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Um, okay. Who is up next? It is Joyous Ocean. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for using members only emojis. Things are going well with R, but I feel like I have a crush on D. Ah! Okay. I think it's my brain trying to self-sabotage a successful relationship. What do the cards say? What a great question. I don't even know if D likes me, but I feel like he does. Okay, well, let's start with that. Does D like you? Three major arcana cards. He doesn't not like you. Those cards have been coming up a lot, even though I'm shuffling. Um, but, like, I don't know that he's actively pursuing. Well, but he might. Yeah, I think there probably is something there, although there's a lot of complexity as well. Would you be compatible with D? It would be different. Um, could be healing in some ways, but, yeah, no, I mean, uh, and what about with R? What's going on with R? See, I feel like there may be some things going on with R where he's not, you know, where he's falling short in some ways. So what should you do with all? Like, is, are you sabotaging? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. I think it's also possible that at this point in your life, 
you are really looking for not settling. And I'm not saying that R is settling. I mean, I think there's things about him that are really great and there's things about the relationship that are really great. But I think you have to allow yourself to question and be open. Um, should you try to pursue something with G? If you did, you would, I mean, I, I think you would, the, the pursuit would be victorious. But should you do that? I would give this time to think about. I'm not going to say yes or no. I'm going to say, this is complex. Give it time. Do not act on anything. Just be normal and examine your feelings. Okay. Oh, another kitty question, a kitty question. Lisa E, I already asked you and you answered my questions, but I do have a cat question. Pumpkin, my wonderful cat, detests my housekeeper and is usually aggressive, unlike with anyone else. Why? It's, it's an energetic thing. The housekeeper is not mean to the cat or anything like that. The housekeeper is fine. It may be a smell. Um, you know, just there's something that, that in the housekeeper's house that the housekeeper smells like to the cat. It's, it's completely like, like that. It's not, it's not anything bad about the housekeeper. It's more just something. I also think the housekeeper moves quickly and the housekeeper does activities that pumpkin does not prefer. So I think it's all of that doesn't like the way the housekeeper smells and doesn't like the things the housekeeper does and doesn't like the way the housekeeper moves. Mess is harsh as the vibe. The housekeeper is harshing the vibe by doing their job. All right, prayer, good to see you. Thanks for being here, we appreciate you. What am I not getting about life? I keep on making the same mistakes, keep on seeing synchronicities, but I don't get the message. What am I doing wrong? Is it past life karma? No, I think it's perception. I think you're telling a story about the way things are happening in your life. There are certainly some things you would like to be different, but you perceive things that happen on the journey as mistakes, because I think it's easier for you to tell a story about how something's bad or wrong with you rather than recognizing that life is always hard to navigate and you're doing the best you can and it'll be okay. All right. Kanchin, good to see you. Sending love right back to you. I think I should ask about this lady who is my father's eldest sister, who I have zero interaction with in my life, having a grudge with me. I only talked to her once on a phone call and her tone and speech, um, everything looks like she's carrying hateful energy. I have no idea what is the reason. Can you please see? It's a past incident. I think it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with your father. That's all I can tell you. It's about your father. You're the collateral damage. Free Shadow, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for using members only emojis. I would like to know if I should put more effort into my current job that I've had for many years or put some effort into looking for other opportunities. Current job doesn't suck. And new opportunities are possible. How about both? How about both? While you're at the current job, put whatever effort into it makes sense, but also look for other opportunities. Do both. It's not an either or. Ah, oh, Wendy, I did. I got baby cakes earlier. I did get her. Um, wish. Love question. Good to see you. Capricorn says he loves me only. Is he telling me the truth? I don't entirely trust it. I don't, no. Okay, classic, y'all. I'm so sorry. 
I am so sorry, Wish, to, to give you this news. And I'm so sorry to turn it into a teachable moment, but I have to. The freaking Seven of Swords, man, no. I, I think he's playing you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. My friends, from my perspective, I've gotten to the end. If I accidentally skipped you, I am so sorry. Please reiterate your question. If you're here and you have not yet asked a question, it is last call for readings, y'all. I am available for readings. StarCon tickets are on sale. If you are a StarCon member, no, excuse me, if you are a member of this channel, there is in the community thread a fabulous discount code for StarCon tickets. Consider using it. Um, I appreciate all of you so very much. Thank you for being here. Special shout out to the members and the moderators and those people helping out with Super Chats and Super Stickers today. Please feel free to like this video. Most appreciated. I appreciate all of you. I'll be back on Monday with your three-card weekly reading. In the meantime, book an appointment. Thanks so much.